Conversation between two young kids. Um, I've had the opportunity to work in a kindergarten class for the past year and I've heard some very funny phrases. Some of my favorites have been, wait, what does chicken pox look like? And do you live at the high school? <laughs> However, the most common phrase I've heard is, do you want to be my best friend? <laughs> do you want to be my best friend? These eight words always make me laugh because they can be sparked by the smallest things. Like, Wait. <laughs> like when someone um, is eating the same snack at snack time, or if someone is playing on the swings together at recess. At the end of the day, in these kindergarten classes, these kids get to pick a play center to play at. They can play in the kitchen, at the art center, with building blocks, anything you can think of, you name it. Each week, I'm shocked at how each kid is so excited to play with any one of their classmates. They're so eager to ask a new friend every day to play with them. Now, think back to our classes. When a teacher assigns us the task of picking a partner or making a group for a worksheet or an assignment, do we go towards a new classmate every time, eagerly as excited, equally as excited to work with that classmate as we are with any of our other classmates? No. We don't see this as an opportunity to meet new people or make new friends. Instead, we see this as a punishment, one where we are forced to be away from our friends. So we have to ask ourselves, what in our minds switch from being best friends with our entire kindergarten class to only talking to half the people in our science class? And how will this continue to worsen as we get older? One of the things to consider is individuality. As we've gotten older, we've each developed our own personalities. Everyone is different from the rest. This means that we might not share the same snack anymore at snack time, and we might not play the same things at recess. This creates a new barrier for us to jump over as we continue to make friends and meet new people. As we get older, this individuality will only increase, therefore decreasing the amount of available points we have to connect with others over similarities in characteristics or similarities in favorite activities. Now, this does not say that individuality is a bad thing. In fact, one of the things that makes our society so special is the fact that we all have different personalities and opinions. But we have to consider that as we become more and more like ourselves and less like others, we also need to change the way that we view the process of making friends. Throughout the next eight minutes, I'm going to be talking about the different barriers that we face in order to make friendships as we age. But more importantly, I'll be talking about how, as a society, we need to change the way we um, make new friends and make new relationships. Another thing that makes the one simple task of making friends much more difficult is the lack of social settings that we're involved in as we get older. Think about all the activities that we were involved in when we were kids. Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, dance class, gymnastics, softball, basketball, soccer. Anything our parents could sign us up for, we were involved in. This means that our circle of friends was naturally extended outwards as we were involved with so many different people and so many different activities. Then, as expected, as we got older, we started to narrow down our plethora of activities to a couple activities, or even just one. Now our big basket of friends has suddenly become a small bowl. Additionally, one other way that um, young kids and young adults can make friends is through school. The majority of our friends today are based on our geographic location to one another. Some of our best friends are only our best friends because 20-something years ago, our parents moved to Brewster, New York, and enrolled us in Brewster schools. Now we spend 30 plus hours a week with those kids, and we see them outside of school at sports, school-related events and hanging out with them for other reasons. Adults don't have this opportunity to make new friends because they're not as immersed in these social settings as we are. Additionally, being forced to be immersed in these social settings pushes us out of our comfort zones. We are involved with so many other people that it becomes easier to talk to them, get to know them, and become friends with them. This will continue as we go into college, as we'll be able to meet friends in our dorms, in classes, around campus, and at football games. Other than the social aspect of making friends, there's also the neurological aspect behind it. Studies have shown through neurological imaging that there's a difference in the limbic system between adolescents and adults. When meeting new people and interacting with others, adolescents will use the more emotional side of their limbic system, whereas adults are going to use the more logistical side. This means that when interacting with others, adults are more likely to analyze things and overthink whereas adolescents are able to look at their relationships and how to create them, maintain them, and nurture them. This means that adults are constantly overthinking their relationships, which can cause them to lose out on the potentially positive relationships they could form, 
because they're focusing more on the logistics and the potential behind them that way versus adolescents who are able to see the potential emotionally. Um, additionally, some people believe that adults don't need as many friends as younger kids do. They can focus more on their careers or on their families. But instead, the opposite is true. As adults are going through different periods of their life, financially or um, with family issues, they have more of a need for friends. And studies have shown that a lack of friends and people to support you um, causes your relationships, uh, causes you to feel isolated in society. And this creates an unending cycle of unhappiness. When you have a lack of friends, you tend to pull yourself out of social situations because you don't feel wanted or accepted in those situations. The more you pull yourself out of these situations, the more that you're gonna create an even greater lack of your friends, and again, a stronger pull out of those situations. The cycle continues until you are left unhappy and even more lonely than you started. Friends are meant to be a mood booster and a stress buster for you, which is why as you become an adult, they are even more important. So we have to get past these barriers that I'm talking about today. Another thing um, that is super important to creating friendships is maintaining and dedicating our time and energy to these new people that we're friends with. When you get older, you have a change in priorities. Now you're focused on your job and you're focused on your families, which is expected. But we have to learn to manage our, li our busy list of life as we get older. And it poses the question, how do, we man how do we decide what's most important to spend our time on that? But that's a question that doesn't need to be answered. We don't need to choose certain things that are, are more important and cut out the others. Instead, we need to find a balance that works for us to be able to keep these relationships in our lives. So as you get older, a night out with friends may turn into a PTA meeting or picking your daughter up from dance class. But we can continue to balance our relationships and create new friendships that way. Now, let's recap. Everyone think about how many birthday parties they were invited to from ages 3 to 11. When you're in kindergarten, you invite your entire class to your birthday party, as well as your whole softball team and your whole Girl Scout troop. Now, as we move on to middle school, the list becomes slightly smaller. Additionally, the setting that we're in also changes. Instead of being in a jungle gym or an outdoor pool, we're now at a small restaurant or in a friend's house. Now this um, list has become smaller, and as we come to high school, the list becomes even smaller. Because we have increased our individuality, we already have a closer, tighter knit group of friends. Additionally, we are, um, we are unable to um, create this new list because some friends may not be able to come because of their lack of time and their busier schedules. Now, the cycle continues and more and more friends start to dwindle away, unable to come to our events, meaning that you might not even want to celebrate your birthday at all. Now, the reason I'm listing these things is not to say that as we become adults, we will have no friends. In fact, the reason I'm standing in front of you today is to encourage you to find ways to manage and jump over these barriers that I'm talking about. And lucky for us, we're all going into college or a career or the military, and we're going to be able to be immersing ourselves in these opportunities to meet new people and talk to others. So, I want everyone to look around. Who are they sitting next to? Your close friends, right? The majority of your close friends. We all walked in the store today. <laughs> we all walked in the store today and picked a seat. We picked a seat next to our friends. Or our friends came in and picked a seat next to us. Now, I'm gonna, in a second, ask everyone to stand up and find a new seat in the room. Ooh. When you find this new seat in the room, this could be next to someone who you don't normally get to talk to and you haven't had the opportunity to talk to, or someone that you don't know anything about and you want to learn something about them. When you go to this new person, just ask them one quick question and learn one little thing about them. Ask them what their favorite color is or what their go-to restaurant is. Go. we need to be more open to meeting new people and putting more time into our relationships. 
We also need to give ourselves the opportunity to go up to someone and ask them a question about themselves. And we need to be, make less assumptions that their differences and their um, individuality from us is going to create a negative relationship in our lives. So I encourage you as we move on to this next chapter of our lives to go up to people, ask questions, immerse yourselves in relationships, maybe ask someone, do you want to be my best friend? I will. Yeah.